Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second, Innistrad Crimson Vow Edition, where we try to showcase for the first time new commanders from this set. This week, David brewed an Umbris deck built around the Hallbreaker Horror, to generate infinite mana and cast and recast Umbris to exile his opponent's decks. Bal is on a Grolnok self-milling build, aimed at casting his frog early and mill his entire deck to be able to win through Lob Maniac or Thassa's Oracle. Late is on Anya Falkenrath, uh, <coughs> Maid of Dishonor, a deck aimed at winning through the Old World Garger loop, generating infinite mana and blood tokens, and drinking them all to kill his opponents. Finally, Helder is on an Old Rudstained Food Chain build, aiming to recast his commander over and over to mill his entire deck to generate infinite treasures, insects and blood tokens, and finish the table with Concorded and Crossroads or Finale of Devastation. David is going first and he kept his first hand, with the Command Tower and a Misty Rainforest for Lance, Mana Vault and Felwar Stone for Ramp, Vampiri Tutor to pivot his game plan to use Reanimate to shit Hallbreaker to play, and Flusterstorm is great interaction. Ball Mulligan once and Captain Urza Saga and Flooded Grove for Lands, Elvish Spirit Guide for Ramp and Cephalid Illusionist is one of the two self-milling pieces needed. Finale of Devastation is mostly used to find combo pieces, Chain of Vapor to remove stacked pieces and delay for interaction, especially good versus Underworld Breach loops. Late kept his first 7 with a City of Brass and Emergence Zone for Lance, Lotus Petal and Arcane Signet for Ramp as well as Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. Goblin Recruiter is used for his Snoop combo and if all turns south he still has Underworld Breach. Finally, Helder Mulligan down to 6, keeping another risky 1 lander with the Marsh Flats. He does have Deathrite Shaman for Ramp as well as Mana Vault and Dark Ritual that can allow for an early Ad Nauseam if he's able to find it. Sylvan Tutor can be the key to find Alasaur Shepherd and bypass any interaction. And with the redundant value effects, he prefers summer over autumn, shipping the latter. Ready for this match? David starts his turn with a Misty Rainforest, cracking it for an underground sea. He goes ahead and fires a Vampiric Tutor to avoid any dark ritual into opposition agents. He finds an Entomb and passes the turn. Val simply plays an Urza Saga, entering and gaining its first ability, and then he passes. Late plays a City of Brass and casts a Lotus Petal. He then dashes in Ragavand Nimble Pilferer, attacking David right away, getting a treasure and exiling David's top card, which is… an Entomb! He doesn't think twice as he casts the Entomb to find his World Gorger Dragon to the graveyard. He still casts his Land's Eye Diamond and then Ragavan is returned to his hand and he passes. Helder plays a Marsh Flats and cracks it for a Bayou. He then casts a Deathrite Shaman and passes the turn. David plays a Command Tower and casts his Arcane Signet, finishing the turn. Ball draws and his Saga gains its second ability. He then plays a Breeding Pool and tapped, paying 2 life, to cast Cephalid Illusionist. He still exiles his Elvish Spirit Guide to cast his Birds of Paradise, revealing mana for Grolnok next turn, but hoping to evade a will from Late or David. Late now plays a Bloodstain Mire and cracks it for a Badlands. He then casts a Goblin Recruiter, entering and finding Conspicuous Snoop, Toxide Exorcionist, Mock Fanatic, Torch Courier and Kiki Jiki, ordering them on top before passing. Helder plays a forest and after some pondering of whether he should leave Deathrite open to exile Late's World Gorger, he decides to exile David's fetch with Deathrite to cast his commander, Old Rudd Stain. And there it goes his dreams of comboing anytime soon with Food Chain hitting the graveyard. He gets a blood token and passes the turn. David plays a Mana Vault and then casts his Umbris, entering and triggering. Opa, é bom exilar as cartas do topo dos outros, não é, Leite? <laughs> it's not his main plan, but a huge horror beating face also does the job, not to mention it completely ruined late snoop combo. Ball draws and his saga triggers, reaching the final chapter. He floats one mana with it in response, and then he tutors for a Shuko to the battlefield. He plays a reflecting pool and then casts his commander, Grolnok the Omnivore. It resolves, so he equips Shuko on Cephalid Illusionist, triggering to mill three cards triggering Grolnok to exile all permanent cards this way with Croak counters. He keeps activating Shuko's ability, targeting Cephalid Illusionist, triggering it to mill three more cards over and over. He then casts a Mox Opal from Exile, and follows it with a Chrome Mox as well, imprinting a Finale of Devastation, so his Opal is online and having mana for the counter magic. He mills some more and finds and casts a Mana Crypt, and then Mox Ember. He also casts Sol Ring and then Basalt Monolith. Some more milling after, he casts a Lotus Petal, and shows a faster way to mill the rest of the deck, casting Mesmeric Orb, and follows it with a Mana Vault to be able to untap Basalt Monolith and tap and untap it to mill the rest of the library, finishing the line by casting Thassa's Oracle. GG. Because this was quite a quick match, we decided to do another one. Once again, David won the dice roll, and he is starting. He kept his first 7 with a Mana Confluence and a Morphic Pool for lands. Soul Ring for Ramp and Wish Claw Talisman and Unmarked Grave will be great to get his Hullbreaker combo going. 
When told me step for interaction, unsolve the equation can fetch protection or another reanimation spell. Bald Mulligan once and found a blast zone and command beacon for lands. Lenoir elves and elvish spirit guide for ramp. Malevolent hermit for protection as well as pact of negation. Mesmeric orb just needs basalt Marlith to go off. Late found a stunning fast hand allowing for turn one Anie. A single bloodstained mire for lands but with a mana crypt, chrome ox and fell or stone for ramp. Red Elemental Blast for protection, Dance of the Dead to go off with World Guards of Dragon, and Hell Mongrel is fodder for Anya Falcon Wrath in the 99. Last but not least, Helder Mulligan once and kept another one lander. He seems to like taking risks. City of Breast paired with Finorn Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Elves of Deep Shadow for ramp. Elrond would be proud. Eternal Scourge at hand with a Vampiric Tutor to find Food Chain, and a Card of Calling for Allo Shepherd for protection. Let's see how this one unfolds. David starts his turn with a Morphe Pool and casts a Soul Ring before passing. Bal draws and exiles his Elvish Spirit Guide for green to cast his Lenore Elves. He then plays a Spire of Industry and passes. Late plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a Badlands. He then casts a Mana Crypt and follows it with a Chrome Mox, imprinting Hell Mongrel. With all that, he ends up casting the top deck card, Stranglehold, effectively shutting down most of Helder's and David's plans. Helder plays a City of Brass and casts Elves of Deep Shadow, passing the turn. David also plays a City of Brass and casts a useless Wishclaw Talisman, finishing his turn. Bal plays a Blast Zone but decides to pass, since casting his Mesmeric Orb now would just help Lay to find his World Gorger. Late rolls and wins his first crit roll. He then casts his commander, Anya Made of Dishonor, entering and creating a Blood Token, before passing. Helder plays a Forest and also casts his commander, Old Rod Stain. It enters and he mills a card, slowly reaching for the top card, hoping it doesn't hit the food chain again. It's a creature, so he creates an insect token. David gets to his turn, plays a mana confluence and casts his commander, Umbris, for lack of better place. It enters and he targets late. However, this time late hits an ancient tomb right away. In his end step, Bal activates Blast Zone to add another counter to it. He then goes to his turn and top decks nicely. He plays a command beacon and casts the drawn basalt monolith. With it, he casts the mesmeric orb. This way, he also sets the spire online and casts malevolent hermit before passing the turn. Layton taps 3 permanents, milling 3 to the orb, hoping to hit that dragon. He loses the flip roll and plays a barbarian ring. He casts a fellow stone and goes into combat, sending his Anya towards the vid, passing afterwards. Elder and taps 3 as well, also milling 3. Old Rodstain also triggers and he mills an LED, creating a blood token. He then overruns the table with a Finorn Elves and then an Elvish Mystic, finishing his turn. David untaps 4 permanents, milling 4. He casts a Phyrexian Revoker, which is another horror. His deck is horror tribal after all. As it enters, David names Basalt Monolith, and then Umbris triggers and he targets Baal, exiling a total of 5 cards until he finds a land. David then attacks Slate for 9 commander damage as an alternative way to deal with Stranglehold. We find Chrome Mox imprinted card right after and fix this. Baal untaps 4 permanents, milling 4 cards. He then plays a tapped Botanical Sanctum and casts his commander, Golnock the Omnivore, to try to bank in on his upcoming milled cards. In his end step, Late sacrifices his blood token, discarding a Fiery Temper and casting it through its madness cost, dealing 3 damage to Golnock. Baal feels forced to respond with his Pact of Negation. Late then taps out to float mana and to mill more cards in his next upkeep. He untaps 6, so he mills 6 and loses the crit roll once again. He then casts a Strong Kirk or Cultist, triggering Anya for a blood token and passes without attacking, fearing David's potential to bounce a single blocker and kill him through commander damage. Helder untaps 2, so he mills 2 and then one more due to his old Rudstain, creating another blood token. He plays a Mana Confluence and then sacrifices one blood token, discarding his Sylvan Tutor to draw a card, as he can't use it anytime soon. He passes and David now untaps 2, milling 2 cards. He goes into combat and sends his commander once again at late, for another 9 commander damage. Late takes it like a pro, and on David's second main phase he casts Gilded Drake. There is some discussion about taking out Baal's Elf, it is an option that kills him to his packed trigger. But since he is still shut down by the Revoker, he targets Late's Anya, as she is the outlet Late would need for the World Gorger loop. In response, Late fires a Red Elemental Blast on the Drake to cancel the exchange, but David responds with his mental misstep, so the exchange is successful. David passes and Balan taps 5, milling 5 cards, exiling 2 permanents with Crow counters. He then pays for the Pact and draws. Unfortunately, he didn't find any blue land, so he plays the Misty Rainforest exiled through Grolnok, in case someone is able to take out Stranglehold, so he can get access to blue mana to have his Hermit online. In his end step, Late taps out once again in order to mill more. He untaps 5 permanents and mills 5, although still no World Gorger to be found. 
He wins the crit roll and then draws. He activates his blood token, discarding an Arid Mesa and drawing. He then goes to combat and attacks Baal with his Stromkirk Occultist. Baal doesn't block, so they trigger, exiling a Phyrexian Tower, which he ends up playing. He follows it with the Talisman of Indulgence and passes. In his end step, Elder cracks his blood token, discarding his last useless tutor, and exclaims at the top deck. He then untaps two, milling two cards, and then mills one to his Rudstain, creating another blood token. He plays a forest, and after some pondering, he goes for it, casting Food Chain. David asks if Baal has blue mana, but Stranglehold is indeed strangling his mana base at the moment, so the enchantment resolves, as David is stuck with a D spell. Helder then casts Eternal Scourge and exiles it to the Food Chain. Still without any interaction, he shows the loop where he exiles Eternal Scourge to the Food Chain and recasts it from Exile, netting increasingly large amounts of mana of any color to cast creature spells. With infinite mana, he is now able to exile his old Rudstain and recast it over and over again, milling his deck and generate infinite treasures, blood and insect tokens, as he has a Gaia's Blessing that shuffles his graveyard into his library each time it is milled. He could then draw his entire deck, but he doesn't need to, as he shows he already has Concordant Crossroads at hand, and is able to cast it and kill everyone with a huge swarm of insects. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. The fear of an opposition agent from a Dark Ritual cost David's first match with his main phase tutor. On the other hand, not showing his mana vault early on allowed him to represent less mana and the potential to cast Umbrius earlier than normal, which ended up costing late Snoop Line, while Baal's Urza Saga slowly ticked its way to find Shuko and take the game under the radar. In the second match, players were packed with tutors, all shut down by a turn 1 stranglehold, and eventually the milling and blood activations enabled Heller to find food chain and go off without a single tutor and through few interaction. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Sake, Katerina, and Michael Bowen, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!